Good morning everyone. So today you and I are going to talk about front-end interview. So let's get into it. Now this is a little bit of a special one because, well, you may not know this but I've actually been in a few interviews myself and I've also interviewed a few front-end developers on behalf of a fairly large company <clears throat> and I've also been kind of asked to review a few candidates for a few companies and things of that nature because it's it's really it's really really tricky to figure out if a front-end developer is good by just talking to them unless you have a front-end developer who knows their stuff now I'm, not, I'm sorry I'm not trying to brag or anything like that but it's very at least what I'm trying to tell you is that it's it's very important since front-end is a very it's a very tricky subject to you can't ask computer science questions, for example. Backend developers and interviewing backend developers is on average, it's easier to figure out. It's still very tricky, but on average, it's easier to figure out what will make a good backend developer in an interview as opposed to figuring out what will make a, big, a good front end developer. And the reason is very simple very few people actually know what challenges a front-end developer is going to face and what a project's biggest issues are going to be long-term in, in, at the UI level. Now, this is just me and my way of thinking about these things. There are absolutely things that I could improve with this process and so forth. And I might be wrong by about tons of stuff here, but this has been a very effective way for me to kind of gauge very quickly the skill level of a potential colleague of mine. And I think this is actually kind of healthy where you basically have a candidate being interviewed by the people who are actually working at the company, the developers themselves, because at the end of the day, it's going to be my colleague, right? So I just want to make sure that they know the stuff that they need to know, right? I remember this one guy I was talking to at my previous job. He was being interviewed for the position that my soulmate Alan actually got afterwards. I'll tell you why. Now, the interview candidate was a I was roughly my age and so we started talking and I was just asking some general questions about you know his background a little bit of his how he would perceive himself as a front-end developer and how he if he would rate his own skill level with say JavaScript for example how where would he be on that gauge and he told me well uh, yeah, I think I'm I'm pretty high on that scale. I would say a nine or a, almost a ten in JavaScript. I feel very comfortable with that. And I said, "Oh, that's awesome. Could you just do me a big favor? Can you explain prototypical inheritance to me, or if you prefer, just the prototype object?" And he said, uh, "No, I can't." Oh, okay, cool. And then I just moved on, and then basically. What I can tell you what just happened there was that he proved to me that, no, per my definition, he doesn't know JavaScript at all. And I ask that question very specifically because I know a very fundamental thing is true about a lot of front-end developers. A lot of front-end developers come in from the UI level. They have absolutely no computer science background. They have no software development skills whatsoever for the most part. In other words, they have never been a back-end developer. They have no idea of what just regular good practices in programming is about. If I asked him about inheritance, he would most likely not understand that. Or rather, he may have understood inheritance, but he doesn't understand that inheritance is not... It used to, it still is. It's only in ES6 where an inheritance actually came into to the, to the ES6 standard. But before that, we used the prototype object. That's the way that JavaScript tried to solve inheritance. Well, not it, it's a little bit different than that, but I know that the prototype object is a tricky question for somebody who, as I like to call them, who, ha who make the mental mistake of believing that... How do I put it? 
it's very easy to build to make yourself think that just because you can you can consistently produce results that you, you that you're more skilled than you actually are it's very easy to trick yourself into believing that you have skills that you don't really have and it's okay i mean pro the prototype object i use it very very rarely it's and but it is still a very fundamental part of javascript it's not like i asked him some really obscure super tricky question this is the sort of question somebody who spent a lot of time with the language will be able to answer and then i asked him the next next question also very easy this because this is this guy is being interviewed for a senior position basically something that is uh, at the time it was actually higher ranked than me and so I asked him the next next question. Could you explain to me what the, you know, if I have, if I if I declare an object, and then I create a, a few references to the this keyword with a few field variables inside of my my object here, could you explain why I I I get this undefined issue when I have a lambda function inside of my, inside of my uh, my object there and. You know, I'm not using E6 or anything like that. W why is it that when I do this dot whatever, it just tells me that there's an undefined variable on my, on my, on my object? He couldn't. E he couldn't explain that either. And he couldn't explain that either because he doesn't understand how the, this keyword works in JavaScript. How it's connect. How, how it actually works. Once again, this is a, a person who's supposed to be a senior developer, but he can't understand these basic concepts that are the sort of things that you learn by really working in the industry. It's not like you go there, you can absolutely go and study these things, but what makes me a little bit nervous is that if you don't even know about it, then odds are that you're not working with JavaScript in the way that I would like you to be working in that way, in a way that you need to be working in order to be a true senior or a true master of the craft. Because let me tell you right now, I see, and not just in the workforce, I see it on YouTube all the time. I see people, and I'm talking, I'm not going to mention anything, but I see fairly big channels. It's very, I'm not going to say too much because it's very tricky to gauge if this is professional, if they are working in the way that they do when they have their clients. My suspicion, or if it's just a demo thing, because I see a lot of things that I am a little bit nervous about. What I'm trying to tell you is that when some, this is especially true for freelancers. And freelancers, not just on, in the workforce, but also on YouTube, people who are the sort of people who only work as a single individual make the absolute worst front end developers. Let me tell you why. I can actually, it's almost gotten to the point where I can kind of figure out that what, immediately if a candidate has spent their, most of their, their time as a freelancer, there's nothing wrong with being a freelancer, but it causes an issue when you want to come into a big company. And it's also the sort of thing that I argue, or that you grow the mindset that I think a lot of people have an issue, where the, that's honestly, I think that's where most of our front end developers out there in the workforce are getting, the, getting all this hatred from companies and some back-end developers because most front-end developers who are out there in the workforce and come from just who are one-man companies or one-woman companies and they are simply working as an individual they never actually learn how to take care of a project long term and that's actually the biggest issue front-end has the problem is not to get a web page to look nice or to be responsive that's easy peasy everyday stuff What's really tricky and what I see all the time, every single company that I have talked to since I started getting to be a more, more mid-level to more experienced profile is that people want me to come into the company to help them fix their front-end code because it's absolutely horrible. The problem isn't the quality of the application. The problem is to maintain the front-end code in a sustainable way over time. That's the easiest way for me to figure out if the per person I'm talking to is truly skilled at what they do. Let me tell you about my colleague Alan's front-end code, front-end test. I didn't even, I, I just, they gave me his profile 
with the demo project. I looked at the project. I saw that he had put up the web page as expected. With an express server, he had even used post CSS with CSS modules. And then I just asked him, what's, asked my, my boss, what's the guy's name? Went to his GitHub account, saw that he had a few contributions in an open source project, a few sublime text plugins that he'd made. And I just, it took me, I think, 20 minutes, half an hour to read through all of that. And I went to my boss and I said, hire him. But don't you, don't you want to talk to him? No, because I know that he's good. I know he's really good. Hire him immediately. And I can tell that, tell, say, tell you that, and I t explain to my boss, I can say that to you with a great deal of confidence because I can see that he has considered more than just making the page look nice. He has considered the issue with CSS. He has, in other words, he has created a sustainable front-end project, something that we can build, or rather in this little demo project, we can build on this. We can, it can scale over time. It's not going to create all these issues that front-end usually faces with a lot of JavaScript that is mutating things. It's the, there's no specificity problems in the CSS namespace. All of that stuff he thought about. That is a professional. It's a true born professional. That's the sort of person I want to work with. I don't want to work with the sort of people who have a lot of ambiguous CSS names. They don't even, it's, you can tell, you, I can taste it on my tongue when I see them work. I can see that they are, they're good at what they do. It's not that they can't do the job, but they are not thinking about anybody else but themselves because they're building a project that has absolutely no long-term goals. It's not designed, or rather they are not thinking about how what they're doing right now is going to affect the long-term of this, of this project. And that's exactly the sort of issue that front-end has, that back-end doesn't. Back-end developers in general, and back-end development in general, is much better at thinking about more people than themselves because back-end developers usually are in the situation where they have to work as a part, as part of a team. The front-end developer is usually very alone. At least that's what I see. And that's actually, as I said, it's a big problem because you don't, as a front-end developer, you most, like, most of them don't have any computer science background or self-taught, and they've never actually worked with other people, which means that they don't consider any of these things. As I said, a lot of the projects that I have to face is the sort of project where the front-end developer has proven this, it's proven to me over and over and over again. They simply don't think about the long-term health of the project. They don't think about testability, they don't think about performance, they don't think about you know, how many dependencies do I have, do I have to maintain these dependencies. None of that stuff even matters in, and CSS is the biggest culprit. If I see you do anything that in, uh, in CSS, it's almost magical. I can even, I can just look at your CSS file for the most part and just immediately tell if you are good or if you're bad. I'm not bad is a strong word, but I can tell immediately if I know if, yeah, I, I can tell if you have worked at large scale with, a sustain, uh, in, with sustainability in mind. Some, as I said, something bigger than your average small level to mid-sized project. We're talking m much larger scale. Now, I'm not saying that these are definitive rules, but they give me a very good indicator of whether or not you're good at what, if you're a, a good fit for a company where you have a lot of these issues and you kind of want to migrate over to something better. So my, what I want you to take away from this, if you want to be a good front-end developer, don't think that what you should focus on is to be really good with design and graphics. These things do factor in, absolutely. But trust me, the, these are not the issues that front-end is facing. The true dragons of front-end is to keep the code base maintainable over time because JavaScript decays and the code gets really messy and ugly really quickly if you don't know what you're doing. The second thing is make sure that you write the code with other people in mind because yes, it may make sense to you and it may work for you, but who's gonna take care of it afterwards? Or do you have colleagues? That sort of thing. And that's the thing you need to think about. So take away, t just take that away from this. Frontend's biggest issue has nothing to do with how good, at you, good you are at CSS. It has to do with sustainability over time. Because tech depth in front end 
is a hundred times worse in general, at least what I've seen, than it is in, in the back-end world. Have a great day.